Hey, it's Trey, and welcome to my desk. Look, I got a new map. It's smaller than my other one, so, uh, but yeah, I figured I would at least put this out here for filming. I don't know if I'm going to use it that much. It's actually pretty cool. Let me get this out of the way. I'll show you. <clears throat> got this on Amazon. I think it was about 15 bucks. So that I love this side. This side is cool. Maybe I'll just leave it on this side. Okay. So anyways, <clears throat> I'm starting a new glue book challenge for November. I just joined a Facebook group. <laughs> I just joined the Facebook group could um, glue book banter. And they are doing a challenge where they have an image a day. And these are all my images. I went ahead and printed them out and cut them out. And my printer is dying. It's on its very last leg. So the images have lines in them. As you can see, they're not very good quality. <laughs> this one's really terrible. And you see, I know it's awful. It looks even worse in real life. You can see that there's red and blue lines. So anyways, I don't really care. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just doing this for my own thing. So I decided that I would do it in this book. Um, the Mountains Are Calling is what it says. And it's kind of raised and bossed. And it's just a notebook. And it was stapled. I took out the staples. And then I just bound it with just um, thread. Just regular old sewing thread because I couldn't find anything else. <laughs> I have some some butcher. Um, here it is. This is what I used. This came out of an old like travel sewing kit, and I had used it to make my little spider costume. And I had it in here because I was working on it in here as I was watching videos. And so I just this was sitting here, and it matched the cover, so that's what I used. <clears throat> See, you don't have to be fancy. So, I'm not even sure where this came from. However, I have decided that, because I looked through the images, I need to fix that. That's ripped. So, I was looking through the images. This is the first image. Now, the, the, the only rule of the game is that this is supposed to be the focal image. And, of course, if you don't want that to be, you don't have to. But that's what I'm going to go by. My rules are, and I'm going to put them on the front page, too. <clears throat> so my rules are, this must be the, the focal image, and there must be a song lyric that goes with it. So I look at it. My life is just filled with music. So nine times out of ten, if I see something, it's going to spark a memory of a song <laughs> of some sort. And usually in the morning when I wake up, I have a song on my mind. So this is a song called Dog by Bottle Rockets. And probably none of you have ever heard it. And I'm going to make a playlist of all the videos of these songs too. That when I post this video, there'll be a playlist also. And I'll put it in the description, a link to the song that this is inspired by. And I'll just talk a little bit about the band when I'm doing this. This is the lyrics that I chose. I love my dog. He's my dog. If you don't love my dog, that's okay. I don't want you to. He's my dog. <laughs> Sometimes it's just this simple. Sometimes life is just this simple. Sometimes life is really just this simple. I love my dog. <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting the man uh, who wrote this song and he was talking about that one day he was just hanging out on the porch with his dog and he was just he had been having a rough time as musicians do and um, get this out of my way And he said that he was just sitting there with his dog and he was just really happy. And he just thought, I love my dog. And he just thought, 
is it really that simple? And he thought, yeah, sometimes it really is just that simple. So I'm trying to decide, do I want, do I want the white space? Do I want to paint it? I don't really want to paint. I really want to just glue. This one's interesting. This looks like I put glue on top of it. <clears throat> This must be really old. I did some experimenting when I first started glue booking. It has some blue in it. It's quiet in the house today. It's actually the second and I was wanting to do this yesterday. But my husband came upstairs earlier than I expected and started watching uh, football. I don't really, uh, I don't know what I want to do. I know that I like this here and I like this here and I like this here. So maybe let's make that permanent and then, then that'll be easier to decide. I'm just going to use a good old glue stick and I'm going to sniff because um, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm coming down with something or if it's allergies because that is what life is like in the South. Half the time you spend, <laughs> you spend half your time thinking, am I getting sick or is it allergies? <laughs> Living in the South, I live in East Tennessee. Been living in East Tennessee is like living in the rainforest and I used to say that a lot because it does it rains here a lot it's humid it's hot <laughs> and I used to always say it's like living in a rainforest and then I met this guy who um, <clears throat> studied at UT on nature I can't remember what his degree is but he, he ended up he teaches at Maryville College now but he has quite a few prestigious degrees in nature kind of sciences. Like I think he specialized in trees, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, <clears throat> he was telling me that the Appalachians, uh, the only other place like our portion of the Appalachian, the only other portion, only other place that has the different varieties and of uh, species of plants that we do is the rainforest. And they call the Appalachians the Appalachian rainforest. I was like, what? Get out of here. But yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, let's go back to the bottle rockets. Um, they are Americana kind of band. I probably wanted to use that side now that I think about it. I just put glue on it. Oh, and I like it too. <laughs> Who was it that had their glue stick on a lanyard? Was it Nicole? Nicole <laughs> at Relax Cut Glue. I love it. I love it. I've tried so many different methods with uh, my glues. And this one was an accident the other day where I, could, I lost my cap and I couldn't find it. And I had this bottle cap nearby, so I just stuck it down in it just like that. And it keeps it wet, you know, it protects it, but protects it. <laughs> oh, I feel so snotty. It's awful. <clears throat> I hope I'm not getting sick. All right. So I locked all those. And this is going to go here. Somewhere around here. And I love my dog will be somewhere around here. Yay. All right. So I really like the blue. Maybe we'll just do like some layers. I wonder how this, this book's going to hold up. Because number one, it's just a cheap book. And I'm just going to 
I don't know. Now let's butt it. I don't know why I didn't butt these. <clears throat> the Bottle Rockets are Americana kind of band. Americana music. So they play kind of folk, country kind of music. Um, dog is not really my favorite song by them because I don't even have a dog. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm so used to, to painting everything in the back and then leaving space between these that this is a new concept for me. This is more of the, I'm doing more of the style of uh, Nicole because she's been kind of an inspiration to me lately. Since I've discovered her, I've really been enjoying gluing with her and to be honest that's what I've been doing instead of making my own videos is I've been watching Nicole and then uh, I was like I need to get off my butt <laughs> and start making my own content instead of just uh, leaving it to someone else because I'm under um, the grand illusion that we should all contribute <laughs> I like that. That should go in somewhere. They have, um, the Bottle Rockets have a song called, I believe it's called Kerosene. It might be Gasoline. I don't remember now. But it says, <clears throat> the song says, if kerosene works, why not gasoline? <laughs> and this whole song is all about this family that instead of using kerosene in their heater, used gasoline. That's the whole premise of the song. Americana music, so funny. You just never know. Um, they also have one called um, wel Welfare Music. <clears throat> And it's actually kind of a catchy tune, <laughs> but uh, I think my husband's favorite song is a uh, thousand dollar car. It says, why, oh, why did I buy a thousand dollar car? <laughs> it's so funny. The whole song's about all oh, the woes he's had with this car that he thought he was saving so much money on. I was thinking, I'm going to try to look. I had to switch. I'm looking right now on my computer. I think that I had to pull. I think I got it. I'm trying to find my playlist because I have a couple of playlists on my other channel. Yes, I have another channel, if y'all didn't know that. Oh, shoot. I can't think of where it would be. Library, maybe. It'd probably be on my mix. Shoot, I clicked on the wrong thing. It took me. So, anyways, Corner Lot Life. <laughs> I want to see the playlist, but I don't want to play it. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> I'm trying to see if I have anything. Radar gun. Oh, radar gun. That is my favorite, favorite uh, bottle rocket song. Radar gun, radar gun. <laughs> Okay, I'm kind of digging that. You digging it? I'm digging it. I need something right here and down here for this page. Let's go tiny. Let's do that. Well, I don't know. Let's do this because some of that's going to be covered up by the girl and the dog. Probably need to go ahead and I think I'm just going to leave this white. Make sure I'm on camera. Do you guys have a good weekend? 
So like I said, I was going to film this yesterday because my I want to try to film my and do this every single day. I probably won't be able to because of work. Because like right now, I'm just taking some time off my job. I, fortunately, I work from home, so I can do this. So I just clocked out for a little bit so I can take care of this. I love my dog. He's my dog. I cannot relate to this song because I do not have a dog. Shoot. Nor have I ever had a dog, really. Um, when I was born, there was a dog in the house. His name was Chester. And uh, I think he was a hound dog. But um, there's a pig on that table. What the heck? I think it's a stuffed pig. <clears throat> but um, he was already very, very old. So... It wasn't very playful or, <laughs> oh, I kind of like that purple a little. Do we need a pop of purple? Pop of purple. No, let's go with the red. That's pretty cool. I need black. I need a black piece of paper. I had some black paper because I was using it for my Halloween. There it is. Oh. There we go. Everybody move. <laughs> I'm not even going to. I'm just going to eyeball this. So me and my husband had the pleasure of seeing the Bottle Rockets at a house concert. And if you have never, ever done a house concert, I highly recommend that you do that. Do a search and see if there's any in your name, in your, um, in your area. They're actually all around the country. So, I mean, you could have one near you and not know it. We sure did. We had lots around us and didn't know it. But we had made friends with this guy. And he did house concerts. And we were like, what? And <clears throat> he would have these bands come to his house. And you would have a potluck dinner. And I don't like that there. Ta-da! And yeah, I like that better. I like that better. I'm not sure exactly what I, what I want to do with this, but okay, this is ready. I may back that too. So you would make a dish. Usually the host makes a anchor dish is what they call it. And then you bring in side dishes and desserts. So I would usually bring in some kind of side dish and a dessert. And that's usually what everybody did. Unless they made some kind of elaborate side dish or an elaborate dessert. But um, for that night, I can't remember what the anchor dish was. But what I had made was this, it was a cabbage dish. Where you just take cabbage and... Um, uh, Italian sausage, cut up the Italian sausage and fry it in a pan with some um, olive, it's an olive oil. And then you put a whole cabbage in there. I mean, you cut up the whole cabbage and stick in there. It's a, and it, oh, it's so good. Uh, I can't even remember what the name of the recipe is, but I had made that. Because I was doing keto at the time. And that was very keto friendly. So, And it was something that I could just eat. And I didn't have to 
uh, and I made myself a keto dessert. So that's what I had for dinner. I didn't have any of the anchor dishes or anything. I made a big old thing of that and me a dessert. And that's what I had. And uh, the guy that was one, I can't remember, one of the band members, the guy. I can't remember. Did he play bass? But he went over and got the lead singer of the Bottle Rockets <laughs> and said, oh, dang it, I'm doing it again. I'm leaving a gap. Don't leave a gap, Tracy. And he said, you've got to try this. <laughs> and my husband was standing there and, oh man, the joy that was on my husband's face because he is a big Bottle Rockets fan. So for number one, he's standing around a kitchen table with this band that he's loved for years, which I know has got to be amazing to me. I didn't even know them. You know, I had never even heard their music. But the guy who hosted it and my husband, they were just over the moon that they had gotten this band. So, I keep pulling out this pig. You see him? It looks like it's a Mass General store, I think. And I think that's a stuffed pig. But that's just so weird and I keep pulling it out. And I don't want it on my dog page. <laughs> so, so, I'm just going to put you over here so I'll stop pulling you. There's some rounds in here. I don't know. It's kind of like that. I'm going to need some little stuff. So I'll put you over here. That would work. As you can tell, this was probably a, a, a shirt. <laughs> because it's not actually, you know, square. I do that all the time. Well, hello, Willow. Are you coming to make an appearance? Hello, Willow. Oh, do you see her tiny tail? Hello. Hello, Tiny Willow. This is Little Willow. She's my little baby. She's my little cat. She is really tiny. She looks still like like a like a kitten kitten. And she's the floppiest little thing. Look at her little face. Look at her little face. Oh, I love my dog. Yeah, I love this is my dog. I've been trying to train her on a leash. Because she, She's so bold and all that. I think she would love to go out and meet new people. But I don't know. She, I took her outside on the leash, we, on the harness, and oh, she did not like it at all. Do you want to, okay, you going to get somewhere? You want to go somewhere? You want to explore a little bit? You want to explore while I'm trying to figure this out? So I put the leash on her. Number one, I got like extra small and she's too small for it. <laughs> she's so tiny. So I had to put it on like it's maximum strength or what strength? Maximum smallage. <laughs> you know, and she still could get her paws out. But I still took her outside and uh, she never would. She would sit there and I would have hope that she was going to do it and then she would just flop over. It was just uh, so upsetting. She's trying to get over to the window, but the window's not open today because it's chilly outside. She's been really into the windows lately, which is why I thought she might enjoy walking on the leash because I'm not letting these cats be inside outside cats like my last cat was. These are inside cats, especially Willow. She would be eaten by a hawk. In a heartbeat, would probably take it take her off right in front of my eyes because we have got some huge, beautiful red tail hawks around here. Beautiful. Um, one landed in the yard the other day, and <laughs> Willow was chitting at it, and I was like, "Girl, you don't want that hawk to know you're here. You better shut up." <laughs> um. So I ended up putting Ember into the harness and taking her out. It fits her perfectly because she's a regular size cat. It fits her perfectly. 
Um, but I put it on her and she's real skittish. I don't know why, but she just is. She's just this, she, mm, she doesn't trust you. <laughs> you are untrustworthy. So she took off running after I got the, the harness on her. So then it took me like 15 minutes to finally hunt her down in the house and grab her. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to let this go to waste. I need to know how she's going to be outside because obviously she can walk in this. So I took her outside and she did great. She was a little fearful, but she did great. I took her around to the side door that we usually come in and she recognized it. She went up and smelled it and she was like, I wanted this door. And then I took her around to the front door, which we keep open sometimes. And sometimes I'll go out there and garden and I'll keep the door open so, so that they can see me. And so I took her in that door. By the time we got to that door, she wasn't so keen on coming in anymore. And I kind of had to force the issue. <laughs> I was like, mm, no, little girl, you, you need to come in. So Jeremy was wanting to go to the gas station and uh, get Gatorade and all that. Because he had just mowed the yard and he was tired and didn't want to drive. So I drove him. Because I am a good wife. That's about all we did. He was going to, he mowed the front yard on Saturday and that's when I took the cats out. I went out and cleaned up the yard a little bit and then while he was still mowing, I went and got the cats and took them out on the back deck. And when I saw how well Ember did, I actually took her around the yard. And then she did freak out when she saw Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know. It was like her mind could not comprehend that he was outside. I don't know if she got scared that we were going to take her off. Because the only other time that she's been outside is when she came into our lives. And when she's went to the vet. And one of the times that she went to the vet, it was with me and Jeremy. And then the second time she went to the vet, it was with just me. So... So I'm sure she's kind of fearful when she saw him. She was like, oh crap, here we go. We're going somewhere. Where are we going? I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> what if I'm gone forever? You know, to me, she's very intelligent. So, and it's just so hard because you want to explain to them, you know, this is your forever home. You're never leaving again, but they don't know. They don't know what's happening. You know, I want to explain to them when I take them to the vet, you have to do this. I'm so sorry, but. That'll be good to use for my, yeah. Song lyrics. Well, I don't want it to go into that, though. So maybe not. I love my dog. He's my dog. If you don't love my dog, that's okay. <laughs> didn't end up using this after all we talked about it didn't use it i think that does good for a background what well, says you i don't really like this in the middle i may end up getting a black marker that was me thinking ahead so yeah when that guy was like you gotta try this it's so good and then the lead singer tried it. I, I apologize. I don't remember his name. And uh, they ended up eating two or three helpings. I mean, they ate it until it was gone. <laughs> they both loved it. So that was pretty cool. That was cool for me, you know. <laughs> I enjoyed that they loved it. Being a southern woman and you make something and somebody loves it, that's just, that's enough. It doesn't even matter if they're famous or whatever. <laughs> I 
But yeah, but then for Jeremy, oh, he was over the moon. We also went and saw them perform. I think it, this was before the house concert. We went and saw them perform at a uh, bar in the area. And it was with the guy that does the house concerts. And we were talking that night that how great it would be if they could get the ball rockets. Well, I wasn't talking because I didn't really care. This was Jeremy's deal. I was just there for the music, you know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, live mu music, I'll go. I love all music. And uh, they were talking about it. And Brian, Brian is the guy who does the house concerts. He was like, really? You, you would come if... <laughs> he's like really you think yeah you, you would like that and you would come and Jeremy was like heck yeah I'd be there and then it seems like it was the next year that he was able to get them so but now Brian just moved to Kentucky and I'm really really sad cause he moved to like western Kentucky so it's not like an easy drive for us I don't know if he's still going to do house concerts or not up in Kentucky. Because the um, I wonder where I got this. I don't remember buying this. I don't ever buy cardstock like this. This must have been given to me somehow or I got it in a pack. Cause this ain't you know ain't my jam. I'll buy the cheap cardstock at a uh, Walmart. So when they moved here, they I think they were living in Nashville. So and they started the house concerts there because I think that's where they found out about them. And of course that makes sense in Nashville. The house concerts would be so big. I don't think I ever finished telling you what it is. Okay, what you do is you have a main dish, you make a side dish, <laughs> and, and and or dessert, whatever. You just make whatever. You bring whatever. And people bring whatever. They bring just store-bought cookies. Some people make elaborate dishes. You know, some people bring a bag of chips. And then you also pay. So usually the, the host will ask for like a certain amount, like $10 per person or something like that. So then you just, you find the host and you uh, find out who is the host, if you don't know, and then you pay them, you know, your money and then you'll eat dinner. And then after your dinner, you always oh, bring your own bottle too, bring your own drinks. So usually the host would uh, provide like soda and ice and things like that. But you have to bring your own cooler and beer and all that. So usually, you know, people were nice. Usually they brought enough for themselves and maybe a, a couple to share or something like that, you know. People didn't get, like, super drunk or anything. <laughs> I don't drink, so I was thankful for the soda so that I had something to drink. And then, um... I need to find like a dog, but then that would that become a sample? Mm -hmm. Maybe I ought to leave it. Sometimes it's just that simple. Sometimes it really is just that simple. <laughs> I love my dog. He's my dog. <laughs> All right, we are calling this one done because sometimes it really is just that simple. I, I'm trying to decide if I wanted to put like who it is like on every page. I don't know. This reminds me so much of a scrapbook page. <laughs> this is like I'm 
I'm channeling scrapbooking, Tracy. All right. Done with that other thing I think I would do. I'll probably have to come back and, and re-glue these down since, since it's glue stick and I'm just using old Elmer's washable glue. <laughs> so I might end up having to come back and put some white glue on that. Oh, look at that superior gluing technique. Follow me for more gluing tips. <laughs> All right, here we are. My very first glue book banter page. I love my dog. He's my dog. If you don't love my dog, that's okay. I don't want you to. He's my dog. <laughs> Ah, day number one is in the books. Thanks, guys. I'll see you all for day two, hopefully.